Hey everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video we'll be answering a question that many have wondered about. I've seen a lot of debate about this topic so I thought hey let's address this theory and that is where exactly did Matt's memories come from? Before answering the question I do want to give a big shout out and thank you to my channel's sponsor audible.com. We've had a lot of growth on the channel lately I know many of you are excited for the series again just because of the upcoming show with all the news coming out and so it has your wheel of time juices flowing. Well now's a great time to start a reread of the series. I'll be starting a reread video series here in the near future and one of the best ways for you to read the series again is actually through the audiobook versions of the books. They are really well done with Michael Kramer and Kate Redding doing an amazing job of bringing the books to life. I have all of the audiobooks and I frequently listen to them while I'm driving around. If you have never listened to an audiobook, or if you're unsure if you would like The Wheel of Time in audiobook form, Audible.com is giving my viewers a very special offer. You can get a free audiobook that you can keep regardless of whether you uh, keep the, the, the service or not, just by following my link and signing up for the trial. Just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nameless and sign up for a free trial. You can cancel the service if you don't like it, but you still get to keep your books for free. There is a link to that in the description below. So this video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers all the way through a memory of light. So if you haven't finished the book series, watch at your own risk, you have been warned. So as with my other fan theory videos, I am gonna start by examining the theory itself, explaining the arguments for it, then I will try and poke some holes in the theory, and at the end of the video, I'll give you my opinion on whether or not the theory is plausible or not. So without further ado, let's take a look at a theory talking about the origin of Matt's memories. So the particular theory that we're going to look at today comes from a website called steelypips.org and was compiled and written by Don Harlow, Joe Shaw, Pam Corda, and Lee Butler. I will have a link to the site and the theory in the description below if you'd like to read it yourself. This theory is incredibly detailed and very well put together, so I'm going to do my best to summarize it and kind of shorten it into a video form. One of Matt's main features throughout the novels is his ability to lead and command in battle. Much of this stems from memories of others that he seems to be able to pull from, and they give him tactical knowledge and experience. There are basically two theories offered up as to where these memories come from. Number one, they were put there by the foxes or the, the fin when he asked them to fill the holes in his memory. Or number two, the memories come from Matt's past lives. So let's take a look at the evidence for each one of these theories. In defense of the idea that the memories come from the foxes, the theory offers a couple pieces of evidence. First of all, Robert Jordan said in an interview that Matt's memories were not from his ancestors, but that they were filled in by the snakes and foxes. Well, this is fairly explicit. He said this, he's the author, so that makes it true. Um, and he actually said it in more than one interview as the theory quotes. He even goes on to say that the snakes and foxes took these memories from other men who had come through the door frame to Rangrial in the past, and that they filled the gaps in Matt's memories with the memories of those other people, as Matt did not specify how he wanted the holes in his memory filled when he demanded that they fill the holes in his memory. It is also after he goes through the door frame in Roydeon that we see him to start to demonstrate his battle prowess. So that seals the deal then, right? It kind of has to be from the Finn. Not so fast. This doesn't account for a couple discrepancies. For one, Matt was having flashbacks that were of a military nature long before he went to Roydeon, or before he even knew who the snakes and foxes were. For instance, when he was healed in the White Tower and he wakes up, he has flashbacks. The snakes also refer to him as son of battles, indicating that he has some tie to battle and command before he received any of their memories. This would also seem to support the idea that he got his memories from his own past lives or something to do with the old blood. Many different people state in the story that the old blood is strong with him and maybe that was the source of his memories. So how do we reconcile the fact that both of these ideas about the origins of Matt's memories of battle seem to be true? Well, according to the theory, they're both true. The theory states that Matt had memories of his past lives in Manetherin, although he wasn't sure where they came from. This is the old blood. He later is given the memories of other warriors and men who had been through the doorframe. The theory also briefly touches on the idea that Matt is King Aemon reborn and states that this couldn't be true 
as Matt has memories of serving the king, and that likely one of his ancestors was an advisor to the king or a general in the army. The theory also answers a couple random questions that are raised by the theory. First, how did the foxes get memories of people dying? Well, Matt mentions a couple times in the books that he hates remembering dying. So how could the foxes have gotten memories of men dying if they had to be alive to come through the Terangrial? Well, the theory states that the Finns did not follow time linearly. So they got access to your memories at one time, but they got them for all time. So essentially, if you go in, they get access to all of your life, all of the memories of your life. The other question they address is that Matt did not have memories of two people that existed at the same time or were at the same battle. So in attempting to poke holes in this theory, it's actually really hard to do. Most of it is very well thought out, and it seems to be factually backed up by the books and by interviews from Robert Jordan himself. I'd go as far to say anything I can add would actually add evidence for the theory. For one, it seems that Matt is bound to the wheel, actually. The Heroes of the Horn seem to recognize him, and Arter Hawkwing speaks to him as an equal at times. If Matt was bound to the wheel, it would make sense why the Old Blood seems stronger in him than it does in the other Two Rivers people. None of them know the Old Tongue or remember past lives like he does. This is because the Old Blood is not really a thing as much as the fact that Matt is bound to the wheel and has memories of himself being reborn. He's been reborn or in labeled as the trickster or gambler, hence the titles that the Finns knew Matt as when he came to their world for the first time, calling him gambler and trickster uh, and son of battles. So obviously, I think this theory is more than plausible and one of the better fan theories I've read. What do you all think? Do you think Matt got his memories from both his past lives and the Finns? Also, what do you think about the idea that Matt is bound to the wheel and that really that's what the old blood is within him? Please let me know in the comments below and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as well as click the bell icon so you can be updated when I release new content. I've got a couple of you asking how you can support what I'm doing here on the channel and really the absolute best way for you to do that is on Patreon. That consistent support is really what makes this channel possible. And my ultimate goal is to hire some folks to help me continue grow the channel and create some of the content that I know all of you want. I'll have some more stuff coming out here in the future to let you guys know about what my plans are for the future and how you can help with that. My, uh, my big goal is really just to grow the Wheel of Time community, and I have some really awesome ideas. Uh, I just need more time to do it, and the way to do that for me is to be able to hire somebody. So if you enjoy my content and want to support what I'm doing here, please take a look at my Patreon page. Thank you to everybody already supporting me over there. I appreciate all of you. You have no idea. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? Tinker asked the mistress, don't you got a labour man? Yes, but she replied, he lacks your talent and your hands. And I can tell you got the skill to hit the spots you see. So, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? Tinker said the neighbour boy can probably get it done He's far too inexperienced, I'll never go there young I'm sure he can be broken in or top, but he's too sweet So Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? The mistress asked the Tinker, can you help me move the chairs? They're just a bit too heavy and they need to go upstairs She bats her eyes, the Tinker sighs, then picks them up with ease So Tinker, manly Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? The mistress told the Tinker, there's a problem with me bed It's rough and full of lumps, the thought of sleep fills me with dread I'm sure if we just roll around I cry aloud in glee So Tinker, handsome Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? Tinker in his small clothes while he's underneath the sheets When the sound of footsteps in the kitchen start to creak He's unaware, don't use the stair or you'll get caught and beat So Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? 
Come on now, girl, use the window, no need for him to see. So tinker, oh dear tinker, won't you mend apart for me? Tinker, oh dear tinker, won't you mend apart for me? Hey!